Have you ever wondered what it's like to work in law enforcement? From deputies on patrol, what it's like to work in corrections, dig into some cold case investigations and reveal the multitude of untold stories of how our officers give back to the community. All stories from your neighbors, the hardworking men and women who serve the citizens of York County. I can back 144 on This is YCSO Behind the Badge, the official podcast of the York County Sheriff's Office. Welcome to YCSO Behind the Badge. I'm Trent Ferris, Public Information Officer for the York County Sheriff's Office and also your host, as you know, every week. Uh, As always, please go check us out on our social media pages. That's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. That's where you can listen to us there on a videocast if you don't have a podcasting service. And lastly, sign up for those notify me alerts straight to your phone and email at yorkcountysheriff.com because when a major event arises in the county, that we feel needs your immediate attention, we can send you notifications to your area. And also, while you're doing that, sign up for Code Red, too. That's the reverse 911 system where you can get same uh, emergency messages directly to your phone as well. All right, all right there at yorkcountysheriff.com. All right, about a week ago, I put a blanket request out on our Facebook page and Twitter followers that we were going to have a Ask a Deputy podcast and, and that was going to be for this episode and asking your burning traffic questions. You know, you're driving down the road probably right now uh, listening to this podcast and you'll probably see somebody go by you at a blazing pace and you probably, why, why, isn't, why isn't a deputy here? Why isn't a, where's the police when you need them? And um, so that's why, or that person made a wrong turn or they didn't use their turn signal or what's up with those this or that and so on and so forth though we're we're here to answer some of those questions i didn't get as many uh question requests on the facebook post as i thought but we did get a few that we can talk about today and so with that said we brought in deputy ryan quinn of the traffic enforcement unit to help us answer some of those questions and we're glad to have you today it's on great. the podcast it's great to be here <laughs> you're not nervous are you not at all yeah no man you're like cold as ice here so um first at uh, every podcast we ask about the person behind the badge that's the name of the podcast so tell us a little bit about ryan quinn and um uh, why you got into law enforcement so on so forth well i've been with york county about five and a half years now mm-hmm. um I came in at the sheriff's office directly out of college, graduated from Winthrop. Bingo. Hey, um, Winthrop grads. Exactly. That's a great school. But, um, you know, I started here. I, I just didn't want to do the same thing every day, right? Mm-hmm. I saw a lot of my friends, you know, uh, they went to the business route and stuff like that, which is great. You know, we need those people, you know, in, in society. But I just didn't want to do that for myself. You mm-hmm. know, I wanted something different and a change of pace every day. And, yes, and you got I, it. I definitely got that, to <laughs> say the least. Um, you know, I. It's, uh, it's, it's very interesting to see um, society at, at its worst and also its best, you know. Oh, well, good. And so Winthrop, uh, you know, a lot of people, you know, when you were at Winthrop, was it one of those things like, you know, did you think about, what did what, you get your degree in, I guess? Well, my major is in criminology and okay. I also have a business uh, minor. Yeah, you know? well, I mean, I have a mass communication <laughs> degree, but then I got a history minor when I was at Winthrop. So right. I was like, what were you going to do with history? because I like history. It, I exactly, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I do like some of the business stuff, but, you know, I just didn't want to do it every day. And so you said, uh, forget that business world. Let's go uh, do something different. Exactly. Do any of your friends go like, what, what are you doing? Why, man, you could have come work for me selling carpets. Or something. Yeah, I mean, most most of my friends growing up, you know, they knew I had an interest in law enforcement, and I started doing ride-alongs, you know, when I was a senior in high school. Sweet. So, I was, you know, I was doing those, and um, I, I felt like that's this is where I was being led to go. So, oh, good. And that's, I'm still here. Awesome. Well, uh, well, you are on the Traffic Enforcement Unit. Is a you know we have a grant that uh, focuses strictly on traffic safety and preventing traffic accidents and so on and so forth. If you ever see the target uh, target zero SC hashtag on our social media pages, that's a a statewide uh, program through you know Department of Public Safety. You know the, the Highway Patrol, I guess if you want to, you know, for lack of a better term, they there's a grant program where you uh, focus on traffic safety. Um, Correct. Pl- pretty simple. Uh, and so we are a part of that. It's the South Carolina Law Enforcement Network um, where a bunch of guys get together, well, a bunch of officers 
you know, we work together hand in hand with Rock Hill PD, Highway Patrol, and all the other local agencies here on traffic enforcement and making sure people are doing what they're supposed to do on the road. And so first, um, the one question that probably everybody wants to know, especially in this day and climate of, you know, law enforcement, um, the one thing that probably will go drive people crazy or probably get your heart racing a little bit if you're a driver is when you get stopped a simple stop when you see the blue lights in the rear view mirror you right. know whether you think you've done something wrong or not right seeing those blue lights can really amp up your anxiety and fear and stuff like that and tell, tell folks you know being involved you know getting stopped by the police is not a scary thing and you know, something that if you did something wrong you probably did something wrong if you have blue lights in the rear view mirror what would you tell somebody if uh, if they're getting stopped by a law enforcement officer, whether it's us or somebody else, what 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 would they need to do first? I think the most important thing is just try to be relaxed as possible. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I think that you know in the majority of my stops, you know, people as long as people's polite, um, you know, just don't stress yourself out. I guess you could say, mm -hmm. you know, um, it's it's stressful when you do get stopped. You know, mm -hmm. Listen, I've been there before. <laughs> Me too. Um, <laughs> You know, it's not fun, mm -hmm. um, but I think the best thing you can do is just try to be relaxed. You know, um, you, you know, keep those things in mind where you know you have your just keep your hands on the steering wheel when the officer's walking up to you. The officer will tell you, you know, or he should tell you why he stopped you mm -hmm. and what he wants you to do next. Okay, um, I always ask for the same thing. You know, yeah. I want your license, registration, proof of insurance. You know, That's and. It. Uh, the best traffic stops that I've been on are people are like, all right, my license in my back pocket. Is it okay if I, you know, reach for that? I'm like, yep, that's what I want. Yeah. So go ahead for it. Um, you know, another thing I do want to mention though, and when you do get those blue lights on behind you, is please try to make sure to find a safe place to stop. Oh yeah, bingo. Um, I too many people that I stopped, you know, they stop on the crest of a hill, and you know, that's just a a death trap basically waiting to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, for for you and I, um, it's, uh, you know, find the next cross street, mm -hmm. pull over on the side street is the best option. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if there's not a side street, you know, put on your, you know, your hazard lights and, you know, to acknowledge that, correct. Hey, I see you, but correct. let's go be somewhere yeah, safe. Well, whatever you do, just don't continue at the same speed acting like you don't, you know, that we're not back there. Yeah. You know, at least acknowledge us in some way that, Hey, I'm going to stop in the, up the road just a little bit so I can get to a safe spot. Now, if it goes a little bit too long. Right, yeah. and the officer will probably activate a siren at that point. And if yeah. that starts happening, you know, I would probably try to find a safe place to stop or mm -hmm. in the very immediate future. Side street, uh, even a gas station Correct. or something, a parking lot Correct. is probably optimal, right? Exactly. Somewhere, but, somewhere off the road is preferable for yeah. sure. For their safety and yours Correct. because there are other crazy people out yeah. on the road. Yeah, more officers are killed every year in – um, collisions with when they're stopped on the side of the road than mm -hmm. than by gunfire. I mean, because when you're when you're in the process of stopping somebody, you're doing a lot of stuff on the you know on the radio, telling dispatch Correct. where you are, or what we're what you're doing, and so right. on and so forth. Yep. So you're doing a lot of work in time of yep. while they're freaking out in front yep. of you. <laughs> right before I even get out of the car, you know, dispatch knows where I'm at. And yeah, what kind of car I'm out with and the tag number and all that. That's just a little secret, side side secret for the folks who are listening to it as they're riding down the road. And if you have blue lights in your rearview mirror right now, don't freak out. Just pull over and listen to the podcast later. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, all right, well, let's get to some of these questions that we've uh, asked for on right. Facebook. Uh, there's uh, The first one I thought was kind of odd. Uh, this is from a dedicated podcast listener. Okay. And um, she uh, did ask, you know, and I know this person, and so it's it really – it was odd that she asked, but it's a quite, it's a legit question, and especially during the summertime. Is is it illegal to drive in flip flops? Some people might think that's weird, but it's a legit question. No, it is not illegal to drive in flip flops. Um, is it a good idea? No, it's not. Yeah. Um, but it's not illegal to do so. It's not illegal to drive with your bare feet. Yeah. But it's also a very bad idea. Yeah. You know. There's a lot of things in life that are illegal to do, but very bad ideas. <laughs> right, because a flip-flop could get hooked on something. Correct. You know, a regular shoe doesn't have open toes and all that stuff. Exactly, exactly. So, I mean, you might – I've had it happen. I've driven in flip-flops. I'm just going to have to put it out there. I have to. You know, sometimes you're, I'm pushing with my toe versus my foot. Right. And then I'm trying to get my foot off the gas pedal or the brake, and, you know, it's – get a little hooked up there for a second so it's probably not the safest thing so Definitely i'm not. gonna put myself out there Definitely so not. so no no it's not illegal to drive in flip-flops or bare feet but is it the best idea no exactly right. 
Exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, okay. Now, this is a pretty good question. This came from the Facebook page. What's the tent requirements on windows in South Carolina, or anywhere for that matter? So, I'm only familiar with South Carolina law, but mm-hmm. in South Carolina, the tent is 27%. Um, on the front wheel chi- on the I'm sc- excuse me on the front windshield you cannot have any tent below the AS1 line which you will mm-hmm. be able to see on your top left corner of your front windshield that stuff that's uh, up there to keep the sun from blinding you exactly no days. tent below that um, on the side windows is 27 percent now what would that be like you know com- if somebody's thinking about it, it's like well what's 27 percent darkness like is there like does it need light shining through it or something like that so the lower the numbers, the darker the tent. Okay. So you have like a zero or one. That's like limousine tent, pretty much. Uh, you can't like you can shine a flashlight directly into it. My high power flashlight, and I still can't see in it. Okay. So one is the worst. Yeah. A hundred percent is clear. Exactly. So twenty seven percent is okay. Exactly. So that's pretty dark. Twenty seven percent is what I have on my personal car, and mm-hmm. I can see out just fine. People can see in it. It's you know it's yeah. but still gives you a little privacy. Yeah. But it's it's also a safety thing for you guys for, exactly. for officers on the road. If you yeah. can't see in, yeah, I'm going to tell you right now. If I can't see in the car at all, I'm going to have you get out of the car. I'm not going to walk up to the car. I'm yeah. going to have you meet me at the back of the back of the car. Because that's I mean, because you can't see what's in the back seat, right. passenger seat, whatever the driver's doing. Right. So it's a safety thing. Yeah, I mean, I'm walking past you know passenger windows. I can't even see, and I don't know if somebody's holding the you know a gun, and I'm walking mm-hmm. right past them. I can't even see that. So that's why it's a good idea, you know. Some officers I've seen, you know, personally, they'll have you just roll the windows down before yep. they even walk up to the car. Yeah, just roll down the window. But it's and, all officer preference. Yeah, and it's, it's safety. And so Correct. if an officer asks you to roll the window down, it's not like, you know, some people may, you know, those folks roll down just an inch. Right. Which is fine. Which is fine. I mean, as long as you give the license, that's fine. Yeah. But keep in mind that, you know, if your tent's too heavy, you know, you start talking about more tickets here. Yeah, roll, roll, roll it down. Let's, let's just... Just be polite. You know? yeah, be I mean, polite. It's, that's really all there is to it. You know, if you if you got a problem with the traffic stop, don't have court on the side of the road. Bingo. I can I can't say that. Uh, you know more. Yeah. Right. If you have a problem with the ticket, come to court. That's what the judge is for. Yeah. The judge is a third party. Yeah. And they will take your argument into consideration when resolving that. Because you you'll be there. The, the defendant will be there, and the judge will be there. Right. And. Both of you are in the traffic stop. Judge wasn't there. Judge Correct. is going by the law. Correct. Exactly. The judge, you know, takes a law and interprets it to what you know the law actually means. And, and, and I guess going back to the the rolling down window down an inch or two inches, that's fine because all you need is that little space to get right. get your license and registration, and then to give the 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 ticket <laughs> or warning. Exactly. Exactly. Um, you know. Like I said, you know, it's perfectly legal to do so. Yeah. You know, but why? You know, why? You why? Gotta be, why you got to be like that? Yeah. You know? <laughs> That's true. You know? That's true. Just if you said, "Hey, could you roll down the window a little bit so I could talk to you better?" Yeah. I'm just I mean, trying to see in for my safety. To be yeah. honest with you. Yeah. Like, I, I, you know, it's not hurt my feelings that you don't want to see me or yeah. me see you. Like, you know, it's not hurt my feelings, but. You know, I'm just doing it for safety reasons. Man, nothing else. Not to be a no. Because I, lack of better things, some people think you know, you're pulling me over because you're a jerk. No, 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 that's not right. No, definitely not. Because you're just pulling you pulling somebody over because they broke the law or did a unsafe thing. Correct. So that and a lot of a lot of traffic safety is just education, right? You yeah. Know, I write just as many warnings as, as I do tickets. You know, warnings are meant to educate the public, mm-hmm. and those are some of those minor violations that people just may not be aware of. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, those are those are war- those are those. That's what those warnings are for. Yeah, you know? so. yeah. And a warning is a good thing, of course. Yeah, it's kind of scary, but it's, it, warnings are good. Right. All right, let's move on. So we talked about window tent. Um, Oh, so there's another question that was with the window tent. What about those headlight tents? You know, if you're going down the road and at night you see somebody with a their their headlights don't look white or yellow, you know, yellowish, mm-hmm. then they're blue or green or something like that. What about the headlight tent? So the headlight tent, I know that you cannot have any blue lights, red lights, mm-hmm. um, anything of that nature anywhere around your car. Right. Um, because blue lights are for police, correct? Red are for, for fire, fire so on and so forth. Yeah. So you know, it's specific, specifically states in fifty six five forty seven hundred that it prohibits blue lights anywhere on your vehicle. Yeah. And forty eight thirty is blue or red lights. Um, another one I wanted to mention was fifty six five forty seven fifty. A lot of people I see have those running board lights that flash and stuff like that. Huh. Um, is that the the the, the, the gives under, the glow underneath? Right. 
Um, Forty seven fifty says that no running board lights except white or amber light. White or amber? That's yellow. Orange. Orange or yellow? Yeah. Right. What about green? No. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Green. No. I've seen green. That's why. Yeah. Purple yeah. from time to time. Right. You know, and it's my, it's a personal thing for me that I, I you know, it is illegal to do so, but unless I see blue or red, because that's what mm-hmm. you can start talking about impersonating. Yep. Um, if it unless it's one of those two colors. Personally, I'm not going to worry about it, but I'm not saying another officer wouldn't. Yeah, I mean, it goes. It's the officer preference, you it's, know, it's officer, officer discretion. Dis- discretion, right? A lot of people don't like discretion, but I'm telling you, discretion is a great thing. Yeah, because I mean, you know, it's like if we didn't have any discretion, we'd be pulling you over for every tag light, every yeah. you know, every lighting violation. We have to write you a ticket if we right. have, didn't have discretion. Well, good. Um, so we're going to skip ahead to this next question that kind of involves this whole headlight deal. And it it was further down on the list, and we talked about it before we started the podcast. Now, it's a good one. You know, everybody's seen them from time to time. And what I've seen, um, or there isn't really a law, I guess, or so to speak, about the Carolina squat. And if you don't know what the Carolina squat is, it's one of the people driving trucks, and they have squatted their uh, uh, taillights down to very – sorry, phone call. Uh, where they've squatted the truck down in the back and the basically the passenger section of the truck is pointing up. Now, I'm not a big fan. I don't know why somebody would do that in the first place, but um, what, what, what's the rule with that? Uh, I guess it, you can't arrest them or give somebody a ticket for ugly. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, it's all personal preference, obviously. You know, mm-hmm. I think that's what the, the quote-unquote cool kids do now these yeah. days. Yeah. Um, which is fine, you know. I, Every five or six years, you'll see like the the new thing you know change, right? Yeah. So right now it's the Carolina Squad, I guess. That's what um, it's called. That's what I I hear the kids call it. Right. Uh, you can <laughs> check them out at your local cookout parking lot on the weekend <laughs> if you're very interested. Yeah. Um. You know, as far as the Carolina Squad goes, you know, it's one of those things. Like I said before, it's officer discretion. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not one of those things that, you know, I'm more worried about other things mm-hmm. than you know, writing some 16 year old a ticket for a Carolina squat truck. Okay. <laughs> I'm more worried about getting drunks off the road Yeah, and impaired drivers right. or in writing people for, you know, egregious speeding violations and reckless but, driving. Well, I guess the, the, the safety concern would be, you know, people have got these things and their headlights are pointing right. up. Even if they have them on dim, the headlights are pointing up and kind of will be blinding the, the oncoming traffic. I guess that's the safety thing. Of course, you know, and if, if that's something that needs to be addressed, then we'll, we would address it. Yeah, because sometimes those things are pointed so high you can, you know, signal the space station sometimes. Right, exactly. You know, it, like, it's not a good idea to do it, but, you know. <laughs> but so you're not going to arrest somebody for having an ugly-looking truck. <laughs> Gosh. I'm sorry. That's my personal opinion. Right. I think they look dumb. Right. You know, like I said, everybody has their, you know, opinion on these things. Um, <laughs> it's not my favorite either, but, you know, if that's what gets you going, then I guess yeah. so. But if they're driving recklessly with the Carolina squad. Exactly. I mean, that's a different story. That's a different story, and obviously we would, you know, handle that. All right. So, simple question is, they dropping your truck in the back is not against the law, but if you're driving recklessly, that is. So, take that in mind, folks who do that to their poor pickup trucks. So, all right. So, here we go. Let's go on to, oh, well, this is another, another tinting question. Uh, what are the rules, and this came from the Facebook page, what are the rules about license plate tags covered in those plastic tent covers? So that's one of those things I was talking about earlier, mm-hmm. you know, something that we would might stop you and give you a warning for. Yeah. You know, um, it, it technically is against Sacramento law. Mm-hmm. But, you know, with me being on the traffic enforcement unit, you know, I'm, like I suggest, or yeah. suggested earlier, you know, license plate covers, I'm not going to, you know, go crazy about. Um, but for the for the audience, yes, they are illegal in South Carolina. There you go. Well, and it's another safety thing because, you know, license plates are reflective for a purpose. Correct. So we can see the numbers on the license and my, plate. And my property crime and violent crime detectives friends may not uh, like me for saying that because, you know, uh, some of these security uh, surveillance videos that they get you know, yeah. and they have these license plate covers on, it makes it a lot more difficult for us to get – um, license plate numbers on off of surveillance videos. Well, even that, it's, I mean, it's hard for anybody. Like, say, even you, go, you pull up behind them, you know, and it's hard for you to read the tag. Right. 
Yes, and that's it, it can be dangerous for identifying people in crimes or vehicles in crimes. It can be dangerous for us. You know, we can't read the tag, and we're, mm-hmm. you know, we obviously need to have that information. Because that's it. what you're doing in a traffic stop. It's, it's like, hey, you, you call in the dispatch. This is I'm pulling over right. a Honda Accord with South Carolina right. one two three four ABC. Exactly. And that that's the that's the safety thing. Of course. And so if you can't see the tag, it's probably not a good idea. And exactly. If it's ugly, yeah. <laughs> no big deal. Right. You know. But anyway, I mean, but it's more 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 like a warning. But if you're driving recklessly that's a with one of those, story. it's a different story. So right. you might get two two violations out yeah, of that. Yeah, I, I should add a disclaimer here that, you know, I'm giving my personal uh, preferences on what I do in certain situations. And that's fine. Every officer is different. Right. So I cannot guarantee that what I say will be the same for somebody else. That's right. Troopers will get you for most anything nowadays. <laughs> I can't talk too bad about my trooper friends. That's now. right. you, you got to work with those guys. No, no, I no. do. I do work with them a good bit. Well, but you're mostly looking for safety violations. Correct. People who are driving recklessly and people who are just not. S- yeah, speeding, impaired driving, oh. uh, you know, things like that. Disregarding well, signals. Yeah. Well, so let's talk about speeding a little bit. You know, there's always that been that, you know, people asking. It's like, I've heard. You know, officers they got that that saying, nine your mind, ten you know, nine you're fine, ten your mind over right. the speed limit. You know, that that's not really the that's kind of one of those uh, internet rumors, right? That's exactly right. <laughs> uh, South Carolina, we we are what's called an absolute speed law state. Yep. Um, so technically, in South Carolina, one mile per hour is over the speed limit. Yep. Is it's called a of- limit for a reason. <laughs> Correct. It is a citable offense, and technically, if you really want to get technical about it, it's an arrestable offense. Yeah, because, I mean, you're driving recklessly. Right. Whether it's 55 and you're going 56, right. you know, whether, oh, I just had a little a little lead foot there for a second. I must say in my five and a half years, I've never stopped somebody for driving one mile per hour over the speed limit. But it's just a thing. It's, yeah, correct. So, but, I mean, if you're going 10 or more, seriously, that's getting, you know, reckless. Yeah, right. You know, and the major thing with speed, and if I can say this real yeah, quick. Yeah, go ahead. Um Speeding, you know, people going, uh, th- you know, 45 in a 35 zone, right? Mm-hmm. It doesn't sound, you know, like it's that much over, right? Mm-hmm. But in a neighborhood, that 10 extra miles per hour adds that much more distance onto your stopping distance. Yeah. If it, the time that it takes you to react to that threat in front of you, whether that's a kid running out right in front of you yep. trying to get a ball out of the road, yep. you know, that's, it just adds that extra distance in your reaction time and also your braking distance. And that's a big thing around school zones. Right. People, people, I, I just know right there in, uh, in front of Northwestern High School and Rollinson Road, that whole strip right there on Highway 5, Main Street and Rock Hill, you know, they have one, two, three, three, at least three signs that I know that have flashing amber lights that said 35 miles an hour, and people just blow through there all the time. Yeah, speaking of that school zone, I was working there the other morning, and I got a, it doesn't take long. Yeah. You know, people go, I got one at 55 through a school zone the other day. Like, you know, it's just like it's nothing. Yeah. You know, you could work there for that whole hour and probably write 10 to 15 tickets. Because people just don't pay attention or it's just they don't care. Right. And that's just me personally. You know, yeah. if you got another officer out there, you could probably keep going. And there's kids that walk across the road. They go to, well, I guess the Burger King's closed now, but there's a subway there and they, they come walking from the neighborhoods right. nearby. Oh, it's very, it's extremely dangerous to speed in the school zone. I can't overstate that, you know. Um, yeah. You don't want to live with that on your conscience the rest of your life. You know, and, I, I can't imagine. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, just because you're late to work right. doesn't mean you should take the you know the risk of right. ending a child's life. Right. You or, don't you don't want to have to sit down across from a trooper or a detective with the city police department and explain why you're traveling 20 miles an hour in a, school, in a speed limit and why you shouldn't be charged with reckless homicide. So next time you see one of those signs, and it, and it varies. It goes from like I've seen them from as low as 15 miles an hour in a school zone to up as as 45 miles an hour in a school zone. It just is the difference. So we talk about braking distance, right? Right. It's, it's a different types of roadways too. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Especially when it's raining. Ugh. Yeah. We can talk about that all day. Oh yeah. <laughs> Especially yesterday, right? No oh, man, it was rough. <laughs> Monsooning out there. No oh, man, it was bad. Um. So um. Let's talk. Uh, somebody asked about turn signals. Why do people not use their turn signals? Well, believe it or not, folks, look in your, if you're driving down the road right now and you're listening to the podcast and you're driving safely listening to the podcast, that little switch on the left hand side of your steering wheel, that's what the, that's a turn signal. That's correct. Well, is there just, just people just don't bother to use them or what? You know, I guess so. You know, um, I think it has a lot to do with 
when you're taught how to drive from yeah. the time that you're 15, 16 years of age, mm-hmm. you know, my parents ingrained in me, always use your turn signal, always yeah. use your turn signal. And I just always have, you know. Yeah, me um, too. I feel it's weird when I realize I didn't do it. Yeah. You know. And um, And it's happened, me too. Of course. I mean, I mean it oh, happens. Yeah, I listen, use my turn signal. You're not a driver in this in this <laughs> world if you've forgotten, you know, if you haven't forgotten to use your turn signal at one right. point in your life. Um but you know it's especially important on those busy roadways that you're and if you got traffic coming up behind you mm-hmm. and you're just breaking all of a sudden you know you need to be using your turn signal right right i mean all the time obviously but especially in those times because you're indicating to the other people around you what you plan to do right yeah i get i get behind these cars that are turning i'm like why are you stopped in the road are you broke down and then, right. then they just turn i'm like yeah. oh Turn signal would have been nice. Yeah. And it's not like you were going to stop somebody from missing it once. Right. But if you see oh, somebody okay. weaving through traffic correct. without it. Correct. And that, that's when it starts to get, you know, egregious and, you know, you might need to address that is when it's a reoccurring issue within a short time period. And I guess that leads into the question. I've seen people driving down the road and they're, your car is not a, you know, a lazy boy lounge. Your driver's seat is not, <laughs> yes. you know, because you're sitting there leaning. People, people are leaning back like they're, you know, cruising right. and everything. And right. that's, you know, they don't bother to use a turn signal because they don't bother to pay attention. You right. Know? You know, and that's that's the biggest thing with driving rights is paying attention. You know, I see far too many drivers just going down the road. You'd be amazed at what you would see in a fully marked York County Sheriff's Office patrol vehicle <laughs> with a light bar, with a <laughs> spotlight on there. You can you pull up right beside somebody, and they'll just be texting on their phone and have no clue that you're there. Oh, man, we could talk about texting. Yeah, that, <laughs> you know, playing on the phone with the Internet. You know, See it all the time. You know, and unfortunately in South Carolina, we're pretty restricted on, what, on, what, on how we can enforce that because we have to be able to prove – a certain thing and it's just more it's very difficult but it's like really egregious like if somebody right. you can tell somebody it's not necessarily you're stopping them for texting and driving yeah, you're taught you're you're stopping them for weaving while driving they're texting left the and center yeah. you know that's that's an easier violation to prove in this state yeah. versus texting and driving you know yeah. which is unfortunate and but that's a different well, that's uh, a, a different, different topic, topic for, for a different, different day, day. <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow all right well we're uh we'll get on here uh school buses oh well no this well we'll go into school buses right. since we just talked about school zones you know school buses you know every state's different it seems but yes. south carolina is you know pretty right on with with school buses because you know people say oh I'm going to stop for a school bus anytime I see a school bus. And that's not necessarily right on a four-lane road. Correct. Four-lane roads in South Carolina, you don't always – if you're behind a school bus, you stop. But so, on the other direction. So if you're on a four-lane road or any other lane road and there is a divided highway, mm-hmm. the other opposite lane does not have to stop. Okay? Like if you're driving down Selenese. Selenese is a perfect example of that. So you have three lanes on each side with a divided highway with a median in the middle. Yeah. Um, you do not have to stop for a school bus if the school bus is obviously if you're if the school bus is going west and you're going east mm-hmm. you do not have to stop right um if you're behind the school bus you yes. better stop yes and i would point out that failure to stop for a school bus is a six point violation and it's over a thousand dollar fine and it's not worth hitting a kid no exactly because the law i think if i remember correctly something like south carolina the lawmakers actually are smart because they realize that you know a parent should not have to send their kid to a school bus stop across a three-lane road. The school bus will come to the side where it's safer for the kid to get into the school bus through the door. Correct. And, you know, and on a, like a two-lane road with no divided highway, both lanes have to stop, you know. Which is a, regular. A road that comes to my head is Neely Store Road. Neely you Store know, Road. A you know, two-lane road, one right. one on, going each direction. Right. You know, both, both ways have to stop. Both ways. If you see a school bus, you better stop. Right. You know, and I frequently going down as we're going back to mm-hmm. selling these, you know, cars will stop, you know, on the, when they're not supposed to, you know, some cars go and it just creates all kinds of issues, yeah. um, backups. Um, people get upset when people do that because they don't seem to know the law. Yeah. Um, it just, it just creates issues. So, and I know we have a lot of folks from North Carolina who live, well, work here and live there and their laws are different. I right. Mean, but, and I'm not a hundred percent certain on I'm their, not either, on but North I know Carolina it's laws. I know that's. Um, I know it is different. I think it's something like if it's a median that you don't have to stop, but if it's like a regular double yellow right. line or something like that, yeah. I think that's the difference. But here in South Carolina, if it's a multi-lane highway, whether it's a double yellow line in the middle or a median in the middle, that's when you know if, if you're behind the school bus, stop. 
Correct. If you're coming from the opposite direction on a multi-lane highway with median or double lane, yellow line, you Correct. don't have to stop. Just slow down. Correct. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> Slowing down is never going to be a problem. <laughs> nah. Slow down. Watch out for kids because right. you never know when a kid's going to run out or do whatever because kids are going to be kids. Yeah, you can never be too cautious around school buses, um, school zones, et cetera. No. Well, uh, last question, and then we'll go into some holiday travel safety tips. Last question from our Internet friends. Uh, this person seems pretty pretty angry about p- turning left onto a two lane road. So you're at a, a the best way I could think of it. If you ever turn from um, Fire Tower Road in Rock Hill, and you're turning onto Albright Road slash Main Street, yes, you know you you get these people. You're going from a two lane road to a four lane road. Mm-hmm. Um, what do people? What what's the rule about that? So when people turn left, um, anytime you turn left, really, if it's on onto a multi lane road. You have to turn into the innermost lane towards right. the center of the road. Yeah. Okay. So we, in law enforcement, we call that the number one lane. Yeah. Um, so the number one lane is the the lane that you should always turn into is if you, is you know if you're going taking a left turn. Yeah. Now if you're taking a right turn, yeah. you would go into the number, whatever the far furthest right closest to the sidewalk. Closest or something. to the sidewalk. Yeah. Exactly. Because um, people like to drift. People, right. People <laughs> like to go, you know, they, they're supposed to turn into the furthest right lane, and then they go all the way to the left, and mm-hmm. that you have a lot of collisions that occur when people are turning, you know, you got people turn left and people turn right at the same time, yep. and they don't turn into the correct lane, is that's when you start to have collisions. That's when you, boom, you're hitting each other because you're thinking the same thing. You're all doing the, the I don't know how you want to call it, the weave yeah. <laughs> or the veer out, the right. the, 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 I don't know. <laughs> you're dragging your turn. Exactly, you know? <laughs> exactly, and, and that is also you know it is against South Carolina statute. Yeah, because you need to, and, and, and folks do it all the time. Oh, it's yeah, one of those all, things. Always, it's you, just a safety thing, right? It, exactly, you know, and um, it's one of those things that you know you, a lot of people don't realize. Yeah, and that they need to do it, and you know that's just, what that's what we're here to do to try to educate maybe. Educate and be safe because exactly. we don't want a collision. We right. don't want because sometimes collisions lead to serious injuries or even death. death. Right. And that's what we're trying to prevent here. Uh, what we're going to try to prevent now is we're going to talk about Thanksgiving travel. You know, we're doing this podcast right before the th- Thanksgiving travel season. You know, the folks, you know, at the CDC and DHEC say you might want to not gather so large in your Thanksgiving gatherings, but some people are going to bump that. We're still going to go to grandma's house or my parents house or whatever in down you know in charleston right and we're gonna go do some traveling but you know triple a actually released their 2020 travel forecast and they say it's going to be about it's going to be lower that they're, they're going to, fewer travelers are going to be hitting the road over the travel holiday season here um, they estimate 50 million americans are expected to travel for thanksgiving but a recent rise to covid19 cases recommend they all recommend folks to stay home and uh government officials I don't know if that's us included, is likely to result in a lower number of holiday travel uh, accidents, but people are not going to listen to the government. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Um, Another thing, you know, before we get into these tips that I want to point out is if we've seen a lot this year with, you know, especially back in March, April, you know, when people weren't really on the roads, we still had a very high number of fatalities. Which is weird. weird. It, it is weird, but you, th- you stop and think about it, and people are tra- traveling faster at faster speeds due to lower traffic. Yeah. And when you're going, <laughs> you're eight, right. if you're going, you know, 80 miles an hour, it's almost a 0% chance that you survive a collision. Right. Especially so, if you hit something. Right. A deer. Yeah. I mean, deer, tree, you know, you never win yeah. versus trees. Yeah. So, you know. We've, we've, we were seeing that there was just as many fatalities on the roads, even though with less traffic, and it's due to increased speeds. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's terrible. So the best thing is to do on your holiday travel tips is do one first, slow down. Correct. That is, <laughs> that is the, the most important thing you can do. That way your seatbelt. Oh, yeah, that too. <laughs> exactly. You know, seatbelts save lives. Yeah, I, can't, I, I can't, tell my kids that all the time. Yeah, I can't say that enough, you know. Oh, but it's so cumbersome, and I'm taking a long tra- trip. It's, it's really not, you know. <laughs> nah, you barely know it's there sometimes. You barely know it's there. If you do it all the time, you won't even notice it. Right. Uh, what are some other things folks can do to, you know, have a safe trip to wherever they're going for Thanksgiving, even if they don't don't want to stay home for COVID? Well, um, I would say, first of all, you know, make sure your car is maintained yeah. properly. 
you know, make, make sure, sure your airs are the, make, tires are got air in them. Right. Make sure your airs, you know, your tires have your tire has air. <laughs> I messed it up too. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get it right one of these years. Um, you know, make sure you know you got you know windshield wiper fluid. Make yeah. sure you know you got a spare tire and it's got air in it. You know that kind of stuff. Simple things. Simple things. You know. Um, um, go. But I was gonna say, you know, that I mean, simple maintenance can you know save your life too. It's not just you know driving. You Correct. Know, make sure your car's not gonna break down on the right. middle of the road because if you're traveling down the road and your car just ends up blowing a tire or messing up, you know that can cause right. some some yeah, problems. Make sure your brakes are good. You know that sort of thing. All right. Uh, anything else? Um, I would say you know just make sure you have a uh, uh, map. You know, map your route out in advance and let somebody know you know which way you're going. Yeah. Um, you know, with technology these days, you know, I know my family, you know, and, you know, we have the little tracking apps that you have on your phone so yeah. we can keep track of, you know, where everybody's at. And, yeah. And GPS that, that's will a, get you there. Of too. course. Yeah. GPS will work, you know, and, you know, but, you know, you, you get out and you have family that lives up in Maine. Yeah. And, you know, they go to these more rural areas hmm. and they, there is no cell phone signal, right? <laughs> oh, man. So, you know, that's why it's important to tell, you know, a friend or a family member what exactly route you're going to be taking. That's true because, I mean, I've been in some pretty rural parts of South Carolina, and you would think South Carolina with large cities like, you know, us, Rock Hill, Greenville, Columbia, Charleston, that there's cell phone signals everywhere. That's, oh, that's not definitely the not the case. No. You, there's places in York County I don't get cell phone signals. Right? Now, if you go out in Bollocks Creek out there, oh, it, yes. you, you're lucky to get something out there. Yeah. I mean, our, I think, our computers and our cars don't work out there. Yeah, you know. we had a missing person out there one time. We were mm-hmm. trying to get a miss- message out to everybody. Say, hey, we're trying to look for this missing person. It's a little kid, actually. Right. And we can get cell oh, phone yeah. signals. Awful. It's very difficult in some places. I know. I was down in it was probably Sumter, Somerville kind of mm-hmm. area. I think I was. Uh, oh gosh, I can't remember where it was, but it was it was country, mm-hmm. and there was no cell phone signals. Oh there. yeah, I couldn't even call anybody. Right, and I think you know people in these bigger cities and us in Rock Hill, York, you know, Clover and Lake Wally, Fort Mill, you know. You know, we're not used to that, right? Yeah. So, you know, if you're planning on going somewhere that's you know a little more out in the country, you know, yeah. like I like I suggested, make sure your cell phone's charged up too. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so, because you once you get out of the country, you gotta you can call somebody and let them know. Uh, one more. Sure. Um, we wrap it up. You know, I would say lastly, um, you know, make sure you have, you know, roadside assistance available to you. Yeah. You know. Um, if you bust that tire driving right. down the you road, know, we have AAA, AAA. Yeah, you know, so we can call them um, if and we need to. If you don't have AAA, learn how to change a tire. Exactly, which you know is an important thing to do. And if you do have to change a tire on the side of the road, do it in a safe place. Yes, um, if, especially if you're on the interstate, pull please pull off to the side as much as possible. Like yeah. I wouldn't blame somebody if they're like almost in the trees. <laughs> yeah, it'd be you fine. Know, to, and it's see, an emergency lane, but get over as best further. You see it in the news all the time about, you know, people getting hit and killed while changing a tire. You yeah. know, it happens in Charlotte all the time. That's true. You know, I've seen, I saw one pretty recently, actually. You know, mm. And it's just, you know, you don't want that to happen to you or a family member. So. Oh, man. Well, we have covered a bunch in the last whew, 37 minutes. I've went a little bit over, but it's all good safety information. We hope to do this again in the future, you know, bringing you in here and answering these questions that folks may have about, you know, traffic safety laws. And if you have a question, don't feel, you know, feel free to, you know, ask us, email us um, or you know, message us on our Facebook page and we'll, we'll answer it the next time we do this. And we, we will do it. We'll do it. If it's a, if something, a question that needs to be answered, we'll do it. Uh, but the last thing we need to, finish up with and we do this with every podcast is asking the person across the table behind the badge is like if you could give a, a little taste of advice for somebody who is right on the edge of wanting to you know become a law enforcement officer whether with us we'd like to have you we're hiring of course uh, or anywhere what would you tell somebody who's uh, considering getting in the law enforcement that's a really good question yeah um you know i would say before you get into this job, make sure this is what you want to do. Mm-hmm. You know, I know that, that sounds pretty elementary. Yeah. But don't come into this job for the wrong reasons. Right. Don't come into this job thinking that all you're going to do is drive fast, shoot all the time. Mm-hmm. That's not what this job is. It's you right. know, um, I would say the majority of this job is paperwork. <laughs> you know, and I'm not saying that to sound boring. Yeah. But, you know, everything that you do... It's got to be backed up on paper. Right. So, you know, make sure this is something that you want to do. Mm-hmm. You know, when you come here, plan, it on, plan on it being a career. Right. You make 
the best of your situation and coming here plan on working hard Mm -hmm. you know i it didn't take me too long i guess you could say to get into a i guess you a a specialized unit on traffic you know i did my patrol time pretty much in catawba in the rock hill district which is you know where i grew up and uh, the busiest part of york county as far as calls for service sure so wherever you get assigned if this is what you decide you want to do you know work hard um don't be lazy yeah you know make sure your paperwork is you know what you need it needed to be you know because if that's not you know if that's not good nothing else is going to be that's right so like i said just, just make move. sure this is what you want to do well and you did you did before you you know graduated from winthrop you went on ride-alongs right. and stuff like that yep. we offer that well not right now because well, of covid, COVID. right <laughs> yeah so <laughs> before covid and i'm sure hopefully it'll be over shortly um you can you can do two ride-alongs per year. Yep. Um, and I would highly recommend that for anybody that is even thinking about doing this job. Or just granted, curious. it's only a six-hour, you know, shot in time mm-hmm. of our job, mm-hmm. but it gives you at least a glimpse into what we do on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, this job is not all glamour. This job mm-hmm. is a lot of dealing with very tough situations. Yeah. But on the flip side, you get to go home realizing that you made a difference in somebody's life. Whether you even realize it or not, there's been plenty of days I've gone home and I just laid on the couch and I'm like, you know, that was a really hard day. Yeah. You know, I don't know how I'm going to do it tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Um, but I still got up and went and did it. Man. So, Well, that's good. We're glad to have you. Right. Well, it's got, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I work at a uh, really good agency that I know, you know, our sheriff has our back and, um, Right. That's, that's a very good thing to have, Sheriff especially, Tolson, in, especially sure. in today's society. If you do right and somebody yep. says you've done wrong, Correct. Sheriff Tolson has your back. Yep. And like we like, all have like he that. always says, integrity is the biggest thing here. Integrity, yeah. respect, character. Yeah, truthfulness. Yeah. We have it all written on the wall in the, tr- in the room correct. over there. You tell the truth and you're good. You're good as long as you did the right thing. Well, good, man. Ryan, thank you for being here with us today. I know we went a little long, but it's all good safety information and good information for folks to know about when they get out on the roads any time of the day, especially during this high, high tra- holiday travel season. But uh, before we go, uh, go check us out on our social media pages. That's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube, where you can listen to us on a video cast. And uh, tell your friends about the podcast. If you heard a question that you've always had, or if your friend had a question that needed to be answered, and you said, hey, I know that answer, go listen to the podcast. They talked about it this past uh, podcast. Uh, go tell your friends the old-fashioned way to listen to the podcast. Why see us so behind the badge? We're on most podcasting services. You know, Apple's the big one, but we're on the Anchor podcasting service as well. Lastly, go sign up for those Notify Me alerts and Code Red alerts straight to your phone and email at yourcountysheriff.com. And finally, thank you for listening to YCSO Behind the Badge.